Praise God. If you turn with me to Genesis 1, 31, which says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. 2 says, Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. 2.2 two. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So, how do we count the days? The evening and the morning is a day. So, from sundown Friday, the evening of Friday, until the morning of Saturday, is the Sabbath, is the seventh day. Amen? So I want to say, Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. And God wants each and every one of us to rest on the seventh day. Amen. Praise God. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Jesus, I'll never forget how you fucking brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Giving all honor to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I just want to magnify the Lord. Come magnify the Lord with me, for his grace endures forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. For he is all we need. And he deserves the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank everyone for coming and joining us on today. And I want to start in Matthew, the 21st chapter, the 22nd verse. And it says, And all things whatsoever ye shall ask, in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Amen. And on today, our lesson will have a theme, learning to pray and discovering God's will. Learning to pray and discovering God's will as we discover a deeper faith in God through prayer on today. Amen? Prayer is an honest conversation with God. Prayer is my spiritual lifeline. Jesus is my mediator and high priest. Through Jesus, I have direct access to God. In 1 Timothy 2 and 5, it says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, or men, the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. It is an expression of my needs, and God invites me to ask, even though he already knows what my needs are. In Luke 11 and 9, it says, ask, and it shall be given. You seek, and you shall find, not and it shall be open unto you. Praise God. So God is asking us 
to ask for what we need. And there's a difference between a need and a want. Amen? A need is something necessary like food, water, shelter. Those are necessary for survival of life. Amen? He says, seek and ye shall find. He's letting us know that we have to walk through the scriptures. Read the word in order to find him. Praise God. And if we diligently seek him, we will find him. And if we knock on the door, he will open up the door to us. And there is nothing that we cannot ask him for. And he'll give us the desires of our heart. But we must be mindful, because sometimes he'll give us the desires of our heart, but what we desire may not be what we need. Amen? Praise God. Sometimes we desire things that are bad for us. But God will give it to us, because in the long run, it will help us to grow. Either we will run or we will stand and fight and finish the race. Amen. What do I pray about? Everything. In Philippians 4 and 6 it says, Be careful for nothing. Don't be worried about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And when you're supplicating prayer, you're petitioning God. You're crying out for His mercy and His love, for His guidance. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I will be earnest and sincere as God knows and sees my heart before he hears my word. God knows everything about us. Amen. He's our creator. Why should we pray? It is a form of worship. As a child of God, it is my privilege to go directly to God with my needs, my requests, and my thanksgiving before I go to anyone else before I go to a pastor a friend a parent I go to God first and ask him for help and he will send the Holy Spirit back to me with the answer amen in John 4 24 it says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Flesh and blood cannot worship God. Flesh and blood cannot know the things of God. Because the things of God is enmity to man. You need spiritual discernment. Praise God. Your intellect will abandon God. But your spiritual man, your spiritual nature, will hold him close and dear and near to you with the understanding that he's all that and a couple of chips. Let's not get it twisted. It develops a habit of close fellowship with God when we pray. It preserves me from evil. Matthew 6.13 says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Praise God. Prayer brings forgiveness. In 1 John 1 and 9 it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Prayer 
secure me, strengthens me, and gives me personal guidance. Praise God. And it will do the same for you, brothers and sisters. There are different kinds of prayer. A. The sinner's prayer. God is waiting and will always hear and answer the prayer of repentance from the heart of the sinner. 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? When we find pastors that conceal the truth, refuse to acknowledge the truth, we have an unhealthy church. Amen. In Acts 2.21, it says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise God. B. Prayer for help in trouble. So you mean to tell me we can pray for help in trouble? Psalm 22.11 says, Be not far from me, for trouble is near. For there is none to help. Matthew 14.30 says, But when he, Peter, saw the wind bolstering, and that he was sinking in the waves, he was afraid, and being, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Peter doubted God. He doubted Jesus. And as soon as he doubted, he began to sink in the water. Amen. As he tried to walk on water. C. Prayer of thanksgiving. In Ephesians 5.20 it says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks. Praise God. D, we have intercessor we prayer on behalf of others. So when you are an intercessor, you're praying on behalf of other people. Christ prayed for his disciples. And you can see John chapter 17. Abraham prayed for the righteous in Sodom, the wicked city, in Genesis 18, 20 through 32. Moses prayed for the children of Israel. In Deuteronomy 9.18, the disciples, or early church, prayed for Peter while he was in prison, Acts 12 and 5. Long prayer. Strength in prayer is better than length. And I want to say it again. Strength in prayer is better than length. It's better to have a short, strong prayer than a long, watered down prayer prayer that people don't even remember. In Matthew 6 and 7 it warns, but when ye pray, use not vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Long prayers are unnecessary, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before he asks him. Matthew 6:18. Public prayer. When I am asked to pray in public, I must remember that I am praying to God and leading others to his throne of grace. Now, I want to say this. Memorizing scripture helps you to pray in public and helps you to pray in private. When you memorize certain scriptures, you can base your prayer in public on those scriptures. Amen. And if you are going to a fellowship service, you can look at Psalm 133 and 1, which talks about fellowship. Amen. You can memorize a prayer, a scripture verse that you can use 
for your testimony or at the beginning of a testimony. Amen. And people are even practicing how to give a testimony so that they can have or give a testimony that will move the people. Amen. But that goes back to Matthew 6 and 7, which warn, but when ye pray, use not vain repetition. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. G. Insincere or selfish prayers. Some prayers are not heard because of sin in my life. Psalm 66 and 18. If I regard iniquity, which is sin, in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Some prayers are unanswered because I've asked amiss. And amiss means faulty, improper, wrong. James 4 and 3 says, Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss. You have a fault, there's something faulty about that prayer, something faulty and improper and wrong about what you're asking for. Amen. So James 4 and 3 says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask submit, that ye may consume it upon your lust. H. Private matters. Matthew 6 and 6. But thou, when thy prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I, we have unspoken prayers. 1 Samuel one thirteen talks about Hannah, who prayed for a son. She spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. She prayed so hard, Eli thought she was drunk. Now that's a prayer. And again, her lips were moving, but you could not hear her. She was praying directly to God. God knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. How often do I pray? If you love someone, do you ask how often should I talk with them? And some people don't want to talk because they don't have nothing to say or they don't want to start an argument. Amen. In Luke 18 and 1, it says men ought always to pray and not to faint. Praise God. In First Thessalonians 5.17 it says pray without ceasing. Try to at least begin and end your day with prayer. Praise God. For the single, I say pray individually. For the couples, I say, pray individually and also pray together because prayer strengthens relationships. How do I begin to pray? I will address my prayers to my Heavenly Father with respect and a proper title. Even as Christ set the example for me, some titles might be Our Father, my Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Gracious Father in Heaven, Our Loving God, Dear God, are some titles that you can use to begin your prayer. Or you can just say God. Hallelujah. Sometimes the only thing you can do is scream or shout out, God. Help me. What should my prayer include? A. Praise and adoration. Example. You will find some in the song. I will bless the Lord at all times. 
God is a mighty God. Amen. B. Thanksgiving. An outpouring of gratitude to God because of his grace, mercy, and loving kindness. And, you know, and when we come to church, most of the time when you go to church, they'll begin with a prayer, a Bible verse, and then we'll start giving praises, singing songs of praises to God. Amen. Thanksgiving. Those are songs of thanksgiving. You know, trying to get everyone on one accord to give God honor for being God. Praise God. If you don't know, that's what we've tried to do. To have a peaceful, sweet atmosphere for God to enter in the house of God, amen, which is the church building. We invite the Holy Spirit in, especially when we're on one accord with one another. An example is Psalms 103. Praise God. And we can read some of 103. Amen. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. 3. Who forgiveth all thy iniquity? Who healeth all thy diseases? 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy? Who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. And that was Psalm 103, 1 to 5. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless God. For he is good all the time. See, communion. When we're communing with other people, we should be praying. When we're taking communion, we should be praying. Praying that we're all in one accord. Praying for one another that we have health, prosperity. Amen. For God's goodness and mercy. Amen. An example would be in Luke 6 and 12. And let's go quickly into chapter Luke, chapter 6. Amen. And see, Luke chapter 6 and 12, it says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continue all night in prayer to God. And who are we talking about here? I believe we're talking about Jesus. And Jesus did what? He prayed all night. Amen. Sometimes God will have, get you up 3, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning just to have prayer time. Spend some time with him. Amen. Some people don't think it's robbery to spend time with God. And when you do that, he gives you answers to questions that you have asked. And if we turn to 1 John, 1 John 1 and 3, it says, That which we had seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Also, D, confession of sins and wrong. And you will get an example of that in Psalms 51. In Psalms 51. 
and we're going to go into Psalm 51, and we won't read the whole thing. We're reading a few verses, but I encourage you that you take the time to read, to study these songs. And Psalm 51 starts off as, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. For against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. So any time we sin, even if we hurt another person, the sin is first felt by God. We sin against God first, and then the person. Amen. And we're always supposed to ask forgiveness from God first, and then ask forgiveness from the other person. Praise God, whether they want to forgive you or not. You know, it's interesting that in the rooms of recovery, they said, if it's going to, if you're giving amends, it's going to hurt the person that you need to do the amends to, then don't do it. But one thing I've learned, it's always better to ask for amends from that person, whether they accept it or not. At least you know, and God knows, you truly did it from your heart. And that relieves you from any repercussions or any curses that were placed upon you for going against God's word. Amen? Because when we go against God's word, an automatic curse is placed upon our lives. And I know a lot of churches aren't preaching that, but read the word. The word teaches this. Praise God. E, petition. Plead for personal health. So that's what a petition is. You're pleading for personal health. You know, some people think that a petition is demanding God or telling God what to do. No, you're pleading for God to help you. An example would be in Matthew 6, 4 through 15. And that's St. Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, 6. And we're just going to go 6. and it says and this is all in red so Jesus is talking here that thy elm may be in secret and thy father would see it in secret himself shall reward thee openly so anytime we're giving anything we are supposed to do it in secret and allow God to see it in secret and if there's a reward he will reward us openly so that's Matthew 6, 4 through 15, and Philippians 4 and 6, praise God. We talked about intercession. Intercession is also petitioning on behalf of others. An example, you can read it in Romans 9, 1 and 2, and 10 and 1. That's Romans 9, 1 and 2 and 10 and 1. And I'm going to read 10 and 1 which says, Brethren, my heart desires and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And so that is our heart desire for the people in this 21st century is that they be saved. Amen. That's what we're supposed to be petitioning God for and asking for. Not for money, boats, yachts, you know. Thank you, Jesus. So, the example again is Romans 9, 1 through 2, and Romans 10 and 1, which we've already read. Then there's submission. Submission. 
Humbly letting God work in your life. Being humble towards other people. Being respectful towards other people. Giving other people reverence. This is submission. Amen. An example is Luke 22, 42. Luke 22, 42. And we're going to turn to Luke 22. So we can have that example. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 22, 42 would say, Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. This is Jesus petitioning God to take that cup, the cup where he had to die for us on the cross. He was asking God to remove this task from him, but not his will. Let God's will be done. Because he wanted to satisfy God. He wanted to please God. And so he did it to please God. Amen. And he went to the cross to save each one of us. Praise God. Next, with conditions upon which prayers avail. You know, because prayers avail as much. We think lightly of prayer, but prayers are very strong. It's a very strong, powerful weapon. A. Must be in faith. So, in order for prayers to avail, it must be in faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, let's go to Hebrews 11.6. And I know we're going through some scriptures today. Those who don't like turning their Bible. You know. But it's important. But sometimes we end up staying in the same pages of scripture. Sometimes that's the middle now. And excuse me for my pages are sticking. But we're going into evil. 11 and 6, which says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise God. That was Hebrews 11 and 6. Let's try Matthew 17. Matthew 17 and 20, which says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Let's try Mark 11. Mark 11. And we're going into 11, 23 and 24, which says, For verily I say unto you, that Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That was Matthew 11, 23 through 24. Names of Jesus. Let's go into John. Let's go to John. 
the 14th chapter, the 13th verse. John 14, 13. Name of Jesus. 14, 13 says, And whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So this is why after we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us peace. And we say, in Jesus' name, because it, we're directed to ask for what we need and end it in Jesus' name. Amen. If we go to 15, 16, it says, that's John 15, 16, it says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye shall go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Made under direction and dynamic of the Holy Spirit, if we go to Jude, chapter 20 and one thing I love about Jude that's the easiest book to remember because it's the book right before Revelation and it says but ye beloved building upon yourself on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost so again we're still talking about praying and prayers how to pray, what to pray for. Amen. D. Sin must be confessed and renounced. Let's go to Psalm 66 18. Psalm 66 18. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it says, If I regard iniquity in my heart the Lord will not hear me amen if I regard iniquity in my heart the Lord will not hear me and this goes back to the fact, fact that we must confess the sin and in the New Testament it says confess the sin one to another amen so that we can be forgiven the sin there's a lot of pastors saying Oh, don't give your testimony. You know, you don't said it one time. You know, you don't have to keep saying it. You better remember where you came from, where God brought you out. Because if you don't remember who brought you out, pride sets in. Amen. I've heard some testimonies, you know, glorifying Satan. You know, oh, I did all this running and carrying on. It wasn't the fact that they ran. And then came to church. It was the fact that they were coming in and out of the church. In and out of the church. And they're not telling the truth about why they were going in and out of the church. Looking for women to help them survive in life. Somebody they can move in with. Amen. False church goals. Amen. Men of Satan, women of Satan, looking to cause havoc on God's people. But we thank God for God. Because sometimes those men and women who think that they're bringing us into the ditch, God is bringing them to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So don't so men and women don't feel like you've done a foolish thing. Amen. Especially when you've given love. See, love covers a multitude of sin. Meaning when you are truly giving love from your heart, heart, and a person wrongs you, God forgives you. 
Amen. But that person that wronged you, they intentionally wronged you from the beginning. They bring about a curse upon themselves. And I will say that over and over and over again until people understand it. Because people act like they don't understand that. They don't understand why things in their lives are going wrong because your motive, you have an arterial motive that is against God and it's against God's people. Amen. So you must get your life right. Let's go to Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ears heavy that it cannot hear. Two, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Amen. So, yes, saints, there comes a time when God will not hear you. Amen. Let's not get it twisted. You know, people go around and say, oh, God, save me once and save me twice. You know, God will continue to rescue us. Amen. As long as our hearts are right. And he knows the heart of man. You can't hide from God. He created you. This is what's so, it, it, it's funny and it's sad at the same time. That he is the creator. He knows your heart. He knows you're wicked and evil. People forget this passage. And many people repent after hearing this passage. Truly repent. I must have a forgiving heart in Mark 11, 25, and 26. Amen. Because people think just because you don't want to go back, you you, uh, you know, and I'm going to have to say this, you left a, a, a spouse because they were cruel to you and you didn't go back. And people are trying to say, well, God, you're under the curse. Yes, why? Because you got married to that person and you left that person. And you know God. And you know God is against the war. Well, you know what? God is against the war. But God, again, knows the heart of man. And you tell me which is more important for God? A person who stays in a relationship where the spouse is abusive and is at the verge of homicidal or for the person to leave and get a divorce. Amen? Because again, you can leave and not even divorce. You know, there are people that separate from each other and they don't divorce. They just stay separated until the day they die. The only problem I have with that is that they are committing adultery with other people. They're not like Anna. Anna's husband died in her youth. And so she lived in the temple until she got old, praising and praying to God the Father. There's a difference. Amen. Let's not get it twisted. Praise God. Because I think a lot of us are getting it twisted so that we can have these second and third and um, Elizabeth Taylor was married, what, over seven times? You know, some of the marriages she married the same man a few times over. But again, it's just to say People, before they get married, they need to know their individual likes and dislikes. People need to understand marriage is not about you controlling anybody. It's two adults, you know, and the adults have their own opinion and they have the right to their own opinion. Praise God. Because that's why God puts us together. 
so we can help each other out. And if we are not able to think by ourselves, you can't help nobody out. You're just a doorman. You're just a slave. And I would have said a wage slave, but you're not getting any wages. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So 11, 25, and 26. That's Mark 11, 25, and 26 says, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So unless you're forgiving the person or have forgiven the person, don't even bother to pray because God ain't not going to hear you. 26. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And I know people who are guilty of this. And they go to church. But the Bible clearly says here, unless you have forgiven your brother or sister, God is not going to forgive you. And he's not even going to hear you. Amen. F. My prayer should be in keeping with the will of God. 1 John 5, 14 through 15. That's 1 John. Let's turn to 1 John 5. And we're going to read 14. 15 which says and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us 15 and if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petition that we desire of him amen and remember, petition means you're pleading your cause. So you have your petition. Think about it. Daniel prayed to God for an answer. And the angel was caught in the third heaven fighting Satan's spiritual wickedness. And held, held Gabriel up for 21 days until Michael the archangel came to help Gabriel so Gabriel can go to Daniel. It took him 21 days to get to Daniel. But Gabriel had the petition, the answer to the petition for Daniel. So why wouldn't God do the same for us? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So how do I discover God's will? How do I discover God's will? Let's turn to Ephesians 5.17. Ephesians 5.17, which says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So here in Ephesians 5, 17, it's letting us know that God will not have us ignorant. He doesn't want us to be unwise. He wants us to know what his will is, praise God. There's no secrets. All the answers are in the Bible. Amen. And the reason why we have to read it over and over again, because the more you read it, the deeper it opens up. The hidden things open up through the Holy Spirit and let you see things you have never seen because it is revealed by levels. Amen. All of us, when we first come to Jesus Christ, we're not ready for that book to be fully open, but to blow our minds to see what's in the Word of God. Praise God. And as pastors, we have to be responsible for the sheep. This is why some pastors haven't even gotten to some of the places I've gotten in the Bible so far. Because people's mind is not ready to hear it. They're not ready for me. Amen? They're just not ready. 
and the pastors are responsible for these sheep. Praise God. Literally responsible. God will hold us accountable. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So God wants me to know his will. As I seek him and study his word, he will make it known to me. Colossians 1 and 9 says, that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I know a man who did not want spiritual understanding. And I know people today, you know, God has shown me that they'll ask questions and they'll ask questions and they'll ask questions just to derail us from the topic, to keep us from finishing what our assignment is for today. And so I've learned and other people have learned that sometimes we just have to cut those people short just so that we can get through the method for the out for the day so we can be ready for the next method on another day. I had a man tell me, you know, God gave me a method for my ex said, you know, God is going to let you get through this word quickly. He said, no, no, no. But yet and still, he could say how he was raised in a church. He knew the Bible. He knew the word. Amen. So when God wants to mature him quickly to get from one level to another, he's going to reject it and he's going to say no. What's that all about? Amen. He's talked, oh, it's about fear. Fear of what? You should be fear, fearful of the devil, not fearful of God. You know? How do you marry a pastor? And now, after you marry the pastor, you're afraid to learn the word so you can grow in level. So you can be your spouse's armor bearer. Because do you realize, as a spouse, you are an armor bearer to your spouse. Whether they are in, excuse me, the administrative ministry or not. If you're just a regular church goer, you, your, your, you and your spouse are armor bearers to each other. You're protecting each other. God is not biased about male or female. We're all in war. We're all soldiers of God. It's not about your sex. Praise God. Amen. And you have to be able to defend your spouse. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, I want to read that again. Colossians 1 9, which says, That ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. But you have to be willing. You have to want what God wants to give you. If you reject it, it's rejected. God is a gentleman. He's not forcing you to get information. If you want to be stagnant, He's going to allow you to be stagnant because you are thinking, oh, well, if I don't grow to a certain level, um, I'm not ready to fully um, do what God wants me to do, then, you know, he won't hold me responsible. The Bible teaches ignorance is no excuse. If you don't know, you don't know, but that doesn't mean God is not holding you accountable. You don't know because you don't want to know. Amen. And I try to teach this to the men and women in my church. It's very important that you know that. Because Adam was not responsible. Amen. And it is shown from Adam until this day, men, men are falling from lack of responsibility. They will not take responsibility. Amen. And when you go through the pages of the Bible, you'll see it. Jesus was responsible. 
because even though he knew what his outcome was, he accepted the challenge anyway. Praise God. That's the difference. Being able to stick to what you set out to do, your purpose. Amen. Because, praise God, God will give you the desires of your heart. I'm back to this. If you say to him, Lord, I want to be a lawyer, he will work it out where you will be a lawyer. Your path and his path will come together and you will be a lawyer and be able still to help out the church. Amen? Because this is what he did for me. I became a nurse and I was able to help out the church. only thing I wanted to do was be a giver was to be able to financially support the church not to be a pastor of a church and look at God amen he gives you desires he fulfills desires that you don't even ask for thank you Jesus so I have a will of my own often it conflicts with what God would want for me therefore I must pray your will be done Furthermore, I must earnestly listen for God's answer to my prayers and seek direction from the Bible for Proverbs 14 and 12 warns me. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And this is why I had to let my third husband go. Because he still wanted to drug. He still wanted to steal. Amen. He wanted to control the church and he was stealing from the church. Amen. He wasn't trying to support the church of God. Amen. And it's important because God has women in administrative positions in churches and they're the, and I would just call them what a spade, a spade, Satan sending men into the church to derail the females. Amen. To derail them. And I've seen it also with men, pastors. Amen. Because a woman doesn't have to, see my ex was guilty of trying to get me to go and worship the man that he's with now. The man wasn't even a reverend because in order to be a reverend, you have to graduate from a school. The man is not a graduate of any Bible school, quote unquote, quote. He just put reverend in front of his name. Amen. And he tried to deter people from going to school. Oh, you better be careful what books you read. God forbid. You may read something that's going to open up your eyes to the enemy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Some people, again, are drawn to evil. Amen. Some people, evil has to come in order for them to get over Jordan to their next level. Amen. Either way, remember, God is in charge. Trust him. Pray your way through it. Ask him for forgiveness. Amen. Because we get ourselves into trouble through lust. And so we have to pray our way out of it. We have to be mindful enough. Hopefully that person doesn't take your mind. Because men can out-reason a woman. And out-reason them to a point where they don't took their minds. They have no concept that they're doing wrong. 
because of their husband, quote unquote, okay, is in control and in charge. But they don't see when their husbands are disrespecting other women, you know, disrespecting his own wife, but disrespecting other women also. That's not of God. Moving on. God desires for me to seek his purpose in my life. Romans 12 and 2 says, That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. And we need to keep this in mind. Romans 12 and 2. That ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because we want God's perfect will in our lives. Not a permissive will. His perfect will. Amen. And when we have God's perfect will in our lives, no matter what we go through, we're going to end up on the other side. We're going to get our breakthrough. Amen. We're going to get our turnaround. We're going to make it. We're going to get our victory. Because we put God first. We kept God first. Amen. The devil can sidetrack you. But even if you're sidetracked for a minute, keep your focus on God. And the Holy Spirit will make that crooked way straight. That's my testimony. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's done it for me. Amen. And he will do it for you. Ways by which I am guided into the will of God. One, his word. Isaiah 40 and 8 says, But the word of our God shall stand forever. All about me may change, but God's word won't. Two, his spirit. Isaiah 30, 21 says, And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. If I'm uncertain what to do, what do I do? If I'm uncertain, what do I do? First, I'm going to pray. Do nothing. Make no decision because of a time limit. You know, as people, we get anxious and we say, oh, well, you know, it's been weeks, it's been months, it's been years. Remember, it took Moses 40 years to leave Pharaoh's house, to go into the wilderness, to find his God, Took another 40 years, then God brought him back to Egypt to do what? Deliver the slaves, the Israelites, the Hebrews, bring them back into the wilderness, back to Mount Sinai. That was 80 years. We can't rush God because Abraham shows us. God goes by our timing. God has no time limit. It's man. We don't want to rush. We want to take our time. Amen. We want to drag our heels. Especially when God is trying to move quickly in our lives. And so we can't blame God because again, I will keep saying this, he's a gentleman and he is going to allow you to do it in your time. But again, you have to remember the difference between you and God. God is infinite. He's immortal. You are mortal. You can die before reaching your goal. Abraham did not see all his promises. Remember that. So it's not promised that you're going to see all your 
promises because you're slapped out. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. And that's really basically for the young people I'm saying it. So you'll know. Stop dragging your feet. Be in God's perfect world. So, one, you're going to pray. Do nothing. Make no decision because of a time limit. Unless you are sure it is God leading, let the matter rest. Two, wait on the Lord. Psalm twenty-seven, fourteen says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. In conclusion, how do I choose my prayer? How do I, no, sorry about that, excuse me. How do I close my prayer? I'm moving too fast. How do I close my prayer? One, in the name of Jesus, John 14, 13 says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So we close our prayer in the name of Jesus is one way. God has given his Son authority. In Ephesians 1, it says, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Amen. Last, we say, Amen. This means, so be it. It indicates our willingness to accept God's answer, whether yes or no. So, Amen means, so be it. It means we agree to it. It indicates our willingness to accept God's answer, whether yes or no, we accept God. In responsibility, our response to God's ability is prayer releases all your eternal resources. Prayer releases all your eternal resources. Amen. And I thank God for this lesson on prayer. This is Pastor Catherine from Mom. Have a blessed day.